Hey everybody, Larry, Dan, uh, Resellers by the Pond. We're pulling a bunch of orders today. Got lots of stuff going on today. Yep. It was a good weekend. Um, to start off with, we got uh, this dinosaur. Dinosaur. <laughs> Picked him up for a quarter at a yard sale this summer. It was a Brachiosaurus, Safari Limited. 1996. Vintage. He sold for $14.99 plus $10 shipping. Pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, this Dead of Winter board game. Uh, Picked that up at the Goodwill. I think we paid two or three dollars for it. It was inexpensive. Pretty popular uh, zombie um, tabletop. It's going out for sixteen dollars mm -hmm. uh, plus sixteen ten shipping. We did take an offer on that. Uh, we got some spoons here. Uh, these are what Oneida. Yep, they're Oneida. Uh, the pattern is Royal Flute. They are cream soup spoons. So that's why they went for a little more. Uh, they did go for $40 plus shipping and those sold within about 10 hours. They were the only cream soup spoons in that pattern listed on eBay you can at the only, time. You can only use them for cream soup. <laughs> Chicken noodle is right out. Uh, we got a simplicity pattern here yep. for a uh, Troll clothes. Yeah, you can sew your own troll clothes, guys. Mm -hmm. That went out for fourteen dollars uh, plus shipping. Yep, we did pay two dollars for that at the Goodwill. Uh, Star Wars trilogy, uh, still sealed, leather bound. This is like one of those. I don't know. Is it the Barnes, Barnes and, and Noble, Noble edition? Yeah. Yeah. That's going out for twenty six ninety nine. I did pick that up at a yard sale. Oh, I can see it's for metallic. For one dollar. And that was sold within just a few days. I think that was only listed about three days. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. And then um, Sting on the card, Sergeant yeah. Pepper Vest. Going out for thirty nine ninety nine. Series three was nineteen ninety four. Ninety four. And pretty he was awesome. mine, so he would have been purchased at retail, but he's been in my collection for quite some time. All right, now we're gonna pull a few things here. Uh, start off with um, this, no, not this. Oh, not them. Uh, Glee, that's a Glee Uno. I think if I remember correctly, it's unopened. Yeah, yeah, the cards are unopened. Cards are unopened, in the tin, yep. collectible. Going out for $29.99. That was a Goodwill pickup that Larry found. I believe we paid $3 for that, yeah. something in that neighborhood. Cheap. So going out for $29.99 plus shipping. Uh, what was the other thing? Uh, the creamer, the Nortaki yeah, creamer. Nortaki. Persian, I think was the... Uh, uh, yeah, Persia. Persia. Uh, and like that is from the Nortaki. 70s. That is going out for $11.99 uh, plus shipping. And that... We've got a lot of creamers at a local thrift store that does pay what you think. So you just make a pile and then you pay them what you think it's worth. Um, so I don't think I have a lot into that, uh, probably around a dollar something in that neighborhood. Pretty happy to see some creamers go out because we, we have a <laughs> fair collection of creamers, cream and sugars that, uh, that we've collected over some time here. Uh, uh, the E-T-shirt. E-T-shirt. This is a vintage. Oh, was it right there? Oh, it was right there. You're gonna have to hold it up. Yes. Vintage E-T-shirt, single stitch. It's like a child's or a... Yeah, it does have some condition issues. As you can see, it's quite cracked. There's some staining. Uh, this was actually mine when I was a kid. Um, so and for some reason it says Bjorn on the back, yeah, with the, the fuzzy letters, like remember, like the early 80s, added. late 70s, yeah. So that is going out for $20. We did take an offer on that, I think we had it up for maybe around $26, something in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Um, and plus shipping, so that, and then we have the cheese slicer over here just old school metal cheese slicer with the wire 
Uh, that is going out for $9.99 plus shipping. It's replaceable I, wire too. Yeah, it's replaceable wire. I picked this up at a yard sale a couple weekends ago. I believe I paid around 10 cents, maybe 25 cents. Uh, very inexpensive. It was just kind of in a bin of stuff that they didn't see any value in. You ever not sure uh, where to replace these wires? Uh, uh, guitar strings work. Oh. And little guitar that. strings. And, and I believe that that is all that's going out mm -hmm. today. We did have a couple more things that are not paid yet. So obviously those are not going out. Uh, but overall, pretty good weekend, guys. See ya. Hi, guys. Diane, Resellers by the Pond here. I have a couple orders going out today that I wanted to show you. So here we go. Uh, first, I have these three WWF coloring books. These were the last three of the coloring books that I had. They are all uncolored, uh, and we did take an offer on those of $18 a piece uh, because he was buying all of them, and we did combine shipping for him. So a total of $54 plus shipping out the door. Uh, next, we have this Hasbro Typhoon figure. He does have some ink on his face. He was one of the ones in not so great condition. We did, of course, disclose that in the listing, and he is going out the door for $12. Okay guys, back with a haul. As you can see, we did pretty well at the thrift store today. Uh, so the very first thing is this nice silk ascot. Uh, I'm actually keeping that. That'll be for Larry, because that is really nice. Uh, so then another thing that I will be keeping is this nice Amberina candlestick. Uh, that will be for my personal use as well. Uh, I have a collection of glass that glows in the black light. And for those who don't know, Amberina, which is this uh, sort of red with the yellow around the edges color, uh, the yellowish color will glow in the black light. Uh, and then also in the middle at the bottom, if you can see that will glow. Uh, so then I have this nice hand painted Nippon handled dish. One of the handles is missing its gilding, but I forgave it for that because I think it is still very pretty. I think that'll be a nice trinket dish for someone or a little bathroom toiletries. Uh, but as you can see, hand painted Nippon. Uh, next, it had a friend, which I suspect came from maybe the same person, also hand-painted Nippon. The stamps are the same, so it's probably right around the same time period, uh, but that's really pretty hand-painted, and the gold is raised, sort of like a moriage. Uh, anyway, so there's those. Those will both go in my booth. I believe uh, I tend to do really well with little decorative dishes in my booth. Um, people use them for, like I said, trinkets or little toiletries, those sorts of things. So I suspect that that's where those will go. Uh, I will throw comps up there if I can find some similar ones. Um, but right off the top of my head, probably around 15 to $18 in my booth seems to be where they move at. Uh, next, I did get this pack of HP ink that includes photo paper and envelopes. Uh, those do not appear to have a high sell through on eBay, but I will throw up a comp for those. I do have to check and make sure that they are not on the, um, uh, the list of things you can't sell. And I'm drawing a blank on the name of that right now. Uh, next these two nice unicorn books. These are large coffee table size books. One is called Unicorns I Have Known and the other is The Unicorn of Kilimanjaro. 
Uh, so those appear to be like folk tales about unicorns uh, spun into stories. Uh, they don't have a incredible sell through, but they do have a pretty high value when they do sell. The unicorns I have known, I'll throw a comp up there. I think it was around $25 to $30. Uh, the other one, slightly less, but we will probably lot those together and throw them up as a lot since they are the same author. Uh, and we will put a comp up there for what we are listing them for if we get those listed before the video comes out. Uh, next this nice little hand mixer. Those do sell pretty well, again, in my booth. Uh, I don't remember what I typically put them up for, but we will throw a comp up there as well. This is one of the ones that's nice. They off to the side handle versus the ones where you have to hold from above. Uh, it's much more ergonomic, so I like these ones. So that is that. It does have a little bit of rust in there, if you can see, so we will get that polished up uh, and looking its best before it goes in the booth. Uh, next, this pair of Keeping Up Appearances sealed DVDs. Uh, I believe this one had a sold comp for around $10. This one, the sold comps were a little lower, but again, I will more than likely lot those up so that those go together. Probably, I would say $12.99 or $14.99, something in that neighborhood. Uh, next, I have this nice divided uh, like mayo dish, or I guess it's probably like a relish dish is more accurate. Uh, I do not know the manufacturer on this, but it is... Uh, has a second fire polish to it, so it's a very smooth glass, high quality glass, um, possibly Cambridge or Fastoria, but I will look that up and try and determine the pattern for that. It did come with these two glass ladles, which have a very, you can't see that on the camera, but they have a very rough seam, so I don't know if those are original to the piece or if they were something that someone purchased later. The glass quality just doesn't seem quite as nice to me as the dish. So it's possible that those are replacements. Uh, but I think that'll be very good around Thanksgiving time. Uh, so I will put that in my booth. I do have quite a few serving type pieces that I'm going to be bringing out for Thanksgiving. Uh, so that will be the perfect time for that. Next, I have this Silver City silver overlay pitcher. I cannot remember the name of that, that particular pattern, uh, but we have had that in the past uh, in a different piece. I, I believe it was possibly a cake plate or something like that. Uh, but we will put that into my booth as well, I believe. Usually little pitchers this size tend to sell for about $30 to $35 for me, and they sell very, very quickly, actually. Um, so I'm actually always on the hunt for little pitchers like this because they do great in my booth. Uh, next, we have some nice silver plate flatware that I really liked the pattern on. I did look these up. These are from the 30s, 1938. They're Holmes and Edwards. Uh, not a huge value. I will throw some comps up there. It did look like the best way to go would be to sell them individually because I did see some sold comps of individual dessert forks uh, for, I believe they were around $8, $8 and change. Uh, these are dinner forks, so we will probably do the same thing. We will probably list them individually since we do not have a full set. Uh, but I have four of the dinner forks, and then I believe five teaspoons, five teaspoons, and then this one other slightly smaller spoon. So I'm not sure if that's a demitasse or if it was a child's spoon. We will have to do a little bit more research to try and determine what exactly that is. Uh, but the bigger ones are definitely teaspoons. They're not large enough to be a tablespoon. 
Uh, and as I said, that one is smaller. So we will look that up. Uh, next, this one is a little bit more recent than the other two dishes that were Nippon. This one just says Japan on it, uh, but also very fun. Probably bring this out late winter in my booth, right when everyone is about to um, start dreaming of flowers and dreaming of the daffodils popping up because in my area at least they are the first flower that really pops up around here. Uh, so anyway I think that will be its time to shine is late winter when everyone is really really sick of the snow. <laughs> so that will be a booth item. Uh, next we have this nice sterling overlay glass trivet. Uh, and the sold comps are all over the place on this, actually. Uh, but I am thinking that we will list it between $30 and $40. We're going to do a little bit more research with Tara Peak uh, and just see. I don't know if I can quickly find the sterling mark on that. Mm, there we go. Uh, but that does say sterling there. And it has the company above it, which was... Webster, I believe, uh, but that is the mark there. Really nice piece. I think that we may put that up on eBay, uh, but depending on uh, if some space opens up in one of, I have a booth in particular that I have in mind that this would do quite well in, uh, but I don't want to overcrowd it at the moment, so that may go there uh, if it does not get put on eBay first. So next I found a nice little collection of vintage jewelry. Uh, so there's this vintage postal workers for peace button. Uh, let's see if I can get it to focus. There we go. That is made in the USA. I believe it was, uh, Florida. Miami, Florida, uh, and then uh, looks like it was printed in Toledo, Ohio. That was what I was thinking was Ohio. Uh, but anyway, that is that. We will try to find a comp and throw that up there for you. Uh, we also have a couple vintage Girl Scout pins. Whoop. Uh, I know this one, at least, they still use on the uniforms. Um, but I don't believe... At least my daughter's troop, they don't have these. Uh, so I'll have to research what that pin is. Uh, but that is those. My daughter may actually claim them, which is okay. Uh, next, we have this nice metal flower brooch with the little faux pearl in the middle. This one is unsigned, but very vintage and fun. Uh, usually around eight to ten dollars is where the unsigned brooches are put up for sometimes a little more depending on what they are uh, this one also unsigned a little silver tone bow with the gold tone middle and the little seed pearls also unsigned but very cute uh, next is this leaf that is also unsigned I actually adore this, and I believe that I'm going to be claiming this one for myself. Uh, then there is this little flower brooch. This one is signed JJ. I don't know if we can get that to focus. And what did you say that company was? Larry had looked that up because I wasn't sure. Uh, but we will, we will try to throw a comp up there for that one, uh, for who made that, because I can't remember what that was. Uh, next, this one is a Trafari brooch uh, with the nice large pearl there and the enamel gold tone brooch. There you have the Trafari on the back. We will again throw a comp up there for that one. This is just an unsigned gold tone tie bar uh, that's very nice. Uh, so again, we will try to find a similar comp and throw that up there. 
also this little pocket square and cufflink set. They are the matching fabric. Uh, so we will throw that up as well on eBay. Uh, I expect that that will probably do well like prom season uh, or perhaps maybe for a winter wedding because it does have that nice ice blue tone to it. Uh, then this rather large vintage locket. Let's see, that is reverse painted on the, I believe it's glass. I believe it's reverse painted. It appears to be reverse painted anyway. Uh, and then it has that sort of ice effect metal. I don't really know what they called that, but I associate it with like the 1960s. Uh, I'm not sure if this is quite that old, but let's see if I can open it with one hand. Whoop, I did, but the front popped off, guys. So we will get that glued back on. It appears to have just come unglued. Hmm. Well, we will get that fixed. There's the failed glue. There it goes. All right. There's so also another tie bar that Larry claimed. which is this here. He joked that it looks like a Twizzler. <laughs> and if you look at the end, it really does, you can see like the strands of metal they braided together or whatever. It's a very unusual tie bar, uh, but it is very nice. So he claimed that one for himself. And then last, this very heavy metal wall plaque of some sort. Uh, it is all in another language on the label in the back. Google thinks it's an Afrikaan. Google believes that it's an Afrikaan. My guess was German, but it doesn't Afrikaan. look like German that I speak. So yeah, <laughs> I yeah. do have a little bit of German from school, but it, it's nothing that I recognize. I mean, it, yeah. I mean, Afrikaans derived from Dutch, so. Okay. And is Dutch a Germanic language? Do we know? I don't remember. We don't know. Let us know in the comments if you guys know. <laughs> uh, what language is this? Anyone care to translate? Anyway, it is a really cool wall hanging. And as you can see, it has all these crests around it. I don't know if those are fam familial crests or what they are. Uh, but anyway, super, super cool. Uh, so that is that there. Thanks for watching guys. Oh, hey everybody. Uh, Larry, uh, resellers by the pond. Uh, Diane wanted me to let you guys know about uh, a situation we had. Um, this is a, uh, a box of, uh, uh, it's a Cuban cigar box. It is empty. Uh, there's no cigars in it. There never, I mean, I'm sure there was cigars in it at one point, but I've never had those cigars. Uh, this was a box that I got from someone. I actually got a couple of them. Uh, and, uh, I would put it on eBay to sell. I had actually put it on, um, there was nothing like it. Uh, H. Upman Habana uh, see, it says there, uh, Hecha in Cuba. Uh, means it was made in Cuba. Uh, there was nothing like it on, on eBay, so I had put it up as an auction. And then someone in Italy actually contacted me and asked me uh, if they could just buy it outright for $50 um, before the auction had even ended. And I said, yeah, sure. So I put the uh, uh, best offer, I mean, I'm sorry, I buy it now for $50 uh, right on there. And then, uh, so they purchased it and they paid for it. And then just as that happened, eBay wrote to me and said, we've had to delete your listing due to an embargo uh, violation because there, there's technically a, a Cuban embargo in the United States. So you're not allowed to import 
uh, Cuban goods, uh, cigars, rum, anything else that is produced in Cuba, uh, you're not allowed to export, import, you're not allowed to sell. Um, now, I assumed because this was just a box uh, and there was no cigars that uh, that would that would maybe um, wouldn't be a problem, but apparently it was. Deleted the listing, and the problem was is the cigar box had already been sold um, to this gentleman in uh, Italy. It's apparently going to a, a marijuana shop in Italy. Um, so I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to proceed. It said that I couldn't um, ship it because the item had been deleted. So I contacted eBay directly and eBay said, because it's already sold, you can go ahead and ship it. And they gave me a link uh, that allowed me to uh, ship the box to them. So we were able to do the sale, but I will never be listing anything uh, like this again because I don't, then I'll probably get in trouble. Um, more seriously a second time. Um, so just so you guys know, even an empty Cuban cigar box cannot be sold uh, via eBay uh, due to embargo reasons. So there we go. Thanks, guys.